Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for another day that you have made. We honor you. We give you glory, God, because there is absolutely nobody like you. Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence, we want you to know how much we love you, how much we honor you, God, how much we need you. Lord, there is nobody like you anywhere, and God, we know that. Heavenly Father, on this day that we come before your presence, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for being our peace. We thank you for being our strong tower. We thank you for watching over us, oh God. We thank you for doing what only you can do, oh God. We thank you for bringing us to another Father's Day, oh God. We thank you as we honor not only our natural fathers, oh God, but we take the moment to honor our spiritual father, oh God. We honor you, Lord God, and your precious son, Jesus, for all that he has done and all that he is doing in our lives. So God, we love you. We praise you. There's nobody like you anywhere, oh God. There's nobody like you nowhere, oh God. We've searched all over and we could not find anybody like you, oh Lord. You're the only wise God, both glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We worship you. We exalt you on this morning. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for being so kind. We thank you for being so loving. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for keeping us, oh God, from from day just seen and unseen, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that things that occurred, oh God, that we're not even aware of, but because of your mercy and because of your grace, you protected us, you spared us. We honor you, we love you, oh God. There's nobody like you, Lord. We've searched all over and we've tried to find somebody, oh God. And there's absolutely nobody else like you anywhere, oh God. Nobody, nobody, nowhere. We thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you for being our shield. We thank you for watching over us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning just to let you know one more time how much we need you, how much we got to have you, how much we can't live without you. Oh, God, I thank you right now for all that you're doing. I thank you for being in this place on this morning, oh God. I thank you, oh God, as we move forward with you, oh God. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you for being our shield. We thank you for being our helper, our, our help, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Because there's nobody, there's nobody like you, oh God, in this place. We honor you on today, oh God, because you've been so good. We thank you because you've been so merciful. Thank you for keeping us from sickness. Thank you for keeping us from disease. 
Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God, I thank you now. I thank you as I attempt to preach your word. As I attempt, attempt to teach your word, be with me. God, my mouth, oh God. God, my mind, oh God. Be with me and keep me. Help me, oh Lord. Help me to teach it and teach it right. Holy Ghost, have your way. I decrease that you increase. I decrease that you increase uh, That you would get the glory out of my life uh, That you would get the glory That you would get the glory uh, Jesus is all about you uh, Jesus is all about you uh, Jesus is all about you, uh, all about you. Woo! Glory We praise you We praise you, we praise you, we praise you We praise you, we praise you, we praise you Lord, Lord have mercy Jesus, this is taking me back Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, she never know the whole stuff. God, I won't turn back. Oh, have mercy. God, I won't give up. God, I won't go in the towel. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. You've given us mission. I can You've given us glory, oh God. You've given us an assignment, oh God. And we won't quit until it's done. We won't quit it till it's done. We won't push. Come on out there. Come on out there. And push. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're not going to quit. All the race is not given to the weak or the battle to the strong. Hey, God. We're not going to give up on you, Jesus. Because you didn't give up on us. We're not going to worry. We're not going to doubt. We're not going to throw in the towel. Lord, we're going to push, Lord, to that person that's feeling a little weak. I need you to push past tired. I need you to push past giving up. I need you to trust God. I need you to know he's your way maker. He's your miracle worker. He's your promise keeper. Yes, he is. There is no quit on the battlefield. If you're watching out there, I need you to lift your hands and give God some glory. Yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. 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 Woo! Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you glory, God, for all that you're doing. We give you glory. We give you glory, y'all. Let's take me back to when I first opened up this ministry. I give God praise. Yes, Lord. Ain't no quit. Ain't no quit. Ain't no quit. I came to give God some praise on Father's Day. I'm all equipped and ready to go. I brought my own praise. I brought my own joy. I brought my own fire. Yes, right where you are. Oh, cut your sound up and give God some praise right there in your living room. Get the cobwebs out ya! 
she's been so good. Yes, she has. Somebody has been waiting all week. 
feel his power. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, Lord. And just when you thought it was over, we might as well church while we in here. Come on and put your hands together. If you're watching out there, cut that volume off. Share the service and let them know that King's Worship Center is on the air. The place where miracles happen. Come out one more round. Come on, don't get tired. Come out and get up off that bed. Come on and get up off that couch and give God another minute of praise. Worship Center, 680 Fairview Road, Simpsonville, South Carolina, the place where miracles happen. We honor God on today for gracing us with his presence. We adore him so much because he has been so good. He's brought us to the beginning of another week, oh God. He's kept us and we didn't deserve it. Lord, have mercy. His unfailing love and mercy. How many of you know it's all about Jesus? 
It's all about Jesus. Everything, every breath that we take, every move that we make is all about Jesus. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for being so kind to us. Now, we're going to go ahead and get ready to jump on into the word of God. Amen. I'm so excited about teaching this morning. So glad to see all of you here in the sanctuary worshiping on this morning. We praise God. We want you to know if you don't feel safe right now to come out, you can always catch us online. But we are doing everything that we can to ensure safe gathering. We are social distancing. We are wearing masks. We got more hand sanitizer than we know what to do with. Amen. More Clorox wipes, more Lysol spray. We sanitize and we're spraying down. Amen. I sprayed so much Lysol over these chairs, you might have choked if you first walked in. But we're going to make sure that you're safe when you come out to worship. Amen. But for those of you that are indeed watching and worshiping with us online, do me a favor and share this service with me. Amen. Are we ready for the word on this morning? I've got a word for you on today. If you would, please, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to John, the gospel according to John, the third chapter. Whoo! Elder Brandon, there was a time when we first opened, we had metal chairs and an old iPod 3G. And we had just one mix that we put on repeat when we was ready to praise the Lord. And we found a way to make it happen. So I'd be doggone if six years later, I'm not going to find a way to give God my best. It may require a little work, but that's all right. We're going to give God some praise because the songwriter said, I know it won't always be like this. Lord have mercy. I see a day. I see a day when these chairs don't have to be spread out like they are. I see a day where people won't be scared to come out and worry about sickness. I believe a day is coming in the distant future where God is going to revive his church. But it starts with small things. So do not despise the small beginnings. And just because you're not here, don't you feel condemned. You're watching online. You're tuned in. We pray the peace of God over you. But I need the ones that are in the sanctuary with me. If you're not too embarrassed, open your mouth and say, revive the church, Lord. Revive the church, Lord. This is the hospital. This is the place of healing. And I refuse to allow it, at least on my watch, for the doors of the church to be denied access. Lord, have mercy. Ah, God, Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm ready to teach you this morning. And I say this all the time, right before all this corona and pandemic stuff happened. I'm not going to be before you long. But I'm not going to say that this morning. I was making a joke. Amen. I'm going to teach you. I'm not going to. You got all the hollering. You're going to get out of me this morning already. I'm going to teach the word. If you would, turn in your Bibles, John, the third chapter, uh, the 14th verse. Amen. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading through the 16th verse. John 3, 14 through 16, reading from the King James Version. And as Moses lifted up the serpent into the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not have, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I'm going to go back to the, right around that 16th verse, which is where I'm going to get the message from today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. I want to talk to you from the thought of father's love. Of father's love. If you're out there with me, just type of father's love. Amen. Of father's love. Go ahead and take your seats. Amen. We give God praise for all that he's doing and we praise God for his word and we know that his word is already blessed. I'm going to take you on a little journey this morning and then we're going to go ahead and wrap up and call it a day. Amen. I'm going to fool with one more thing with this app and then I'm going to put all of my attention on the word of God. Amen. It's time to focus on the word of the Lord. Amen. There we go. Amen. I want to take you on a little journey this morning. And just for reference sake, amen, for the teaching, you may want to notate John 15, 13. You may want to go back and reference John 31, 3. You may want to go back and reference Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. Once again, you may want to go back and reference John 15, 13, the gospel according to John. 
Jeremiah 31, 3, and Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. Amen. Once again, we bring you greetings from the King's Worship Center, 685 U Road, Simpsonville, South Carolina, the place where miracles happen. Today's lesson is simply titled, A Father's Love. I can recall growing up as a young boy in Columbia, I thought my father, my natural father, was probably one of the meanest people on the planet. I don't recall much growing up him smiling a lot. <clears throat> I don't recall, I don't recall, I, I just don't recall a lot of him smiling. I, I do remember him being stern. I do remember him being a hard man. But there's several things I also recall about my father. I recall him being a strong disciplinarian. I can recall him demanding respect and expecting respect. I can remember him always getting up to go to work. He, no matter what he did. Now, I admit, like many of you, my father eventually gave his life to Christ. Lady Nicole on channel one, bring me down just a little bit. I can recall he wasn't always saved, but he always loved the Lord. Amen. He always loved the Lord. And Jordan, I can remember when your grandfather would get up when you get off on Friday nights. The weekend was his thing. It was his music, his R&B music, his best friend Richard and maybe some schlitz malt liquor. And they would be around reflecting, talking about old times and whatever, and they would go through the weekend. But he would get up on Sunday mornings or right before, if he didn't go, he made sure we were up and out the house to go to church. And he may have been overcoming a hangover, but six o'clock or five o'clock Monday morning, you could hear those feet hit the floor. And he ain't miss work. Hangover, not tired or not sick or not. He hit that floor to go to work. And in those days, I didn't understand a lot of what I saw. But when we think about a father's love, we often misconstrue a father's love to that of a mother. Yeah. A father does add some nurturing, but the father is there to add balance. Yeah. The father is there to add structure. The father is there to act as a provider. The father is there as a role model for the daughter as well as the son. To the daughter to show what you should expect from a man and to a boy what you should be as a man. Lord, have mercy. All of us that have natural fathers, we have things that we saw that we didn't necessarily agree with. But if you look closely and take your pain out of the way and take your personal problems out of the way, you would see your father did the best that he possibly knew. Those of us, as I get ready to jump into it, those of us that have had fathers that we've been angry with, or fathers that we've turned our backs on, or fathers that we wish that we thought we had the audacity to judge, because if I was my daddy, I would have done this. You don't know what you would have done because you did not live your father's life. Lord, have mercy. You don't know what your daddy was exposed to. You don't know what your daddy saw. You don't know what your daddy saw out of your grandfather or your great grandfather. You don't know the experiences that your father had that shaped his worldview. I never understood why my father didn't smile. I never understood why my father was so stern. But as I got older and began to spend time with him, this is just the introduction, I began to realize he had a life beyond just being my dad. And Lord have mercy. He grew up, he was in the Marine Corps in the, in the 60s. Lord have mercy. When black men had it hard, when they beat the smile out of you, when you were everything from a racial slur to a no good so and so I didn't realize that when my father went overseas to Vietnam all the murder and mayhem that he had to see and it shaped his world view but what I did learn as I got older is no matter how hard he had it how bad he had it or no matter what things that he did that I didn't agree he never stopped being a provider Lord have mercy Jesus yeah if I could turn back the hands of time there will be some things I would say daddy you need to do a little differently I think a little differently, but one of the characteristics that man takes from his supernatural father is that as a provider and that of a protector, Lord.
Lord, have mercy, Jesus. So I want to speak to now to some of you men out there who didn't have a father in the home, or maybe you had a father in a home, and you don't think he was the best role model, but guess what? Even in the absence of your daddy, you still have your heavenly father. He never left you alone. He's never forsaken you. Listen, he's never left you. He's always been there. And those of you that did have a father in the home, maybe mama was saved and daddy wasn't. That's all right. Did daddy do the best that he could do? Did daddy work to provide? Did daddy work to protect? I'm jumping ahead of my message and I'm sorry that I'm falling out of the homiletical and hermeneutic process. But y'all don't mind if I just be Pastor Kelvin for a minute, do you? Uh, one of the things I can always remember about my father, and most women of God, I want you to hear this very clearly. Uh, you need to see this in your man of God that you call your husband, is that you've got to know if the bottom falls out or if something is wrong, that your husband will lose his mind over the family. Lord, have mercy. I'm not talking about just going crazy, but when you understand one of the roles of the father, the father is a protector. Lord, have mercy. And your children must know that if I call on death, Daddy, daddy is coming and if I cry for help, anything in my father's way is about to get torn down. Lord have mercy. I know we talking, I'm not putting down mamas. I praise God for mamas. But sometimes we forget about those fathers that were standing behind mama. That made sure mama was protected when mama was popping off. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord, I have a strong mother, Dolores Steele, very strong mother. But there was something when LB Steele stepped out on the porch with them stretchy old man shorts and those white socks with the colors on and that wife beat her and he looked out at them fellas in the yard that was some, oh that's Kelvin's daddy and we ain't got time to play and you need to relate that to your heavenly father when you call on your father's name in the name of Jesus anything that is opposing his children you got to know he's going to come in like a flood and he's going to clean house because that is one of the attributes Jordan of a father's love is that he will not allow anything to come in between he and his children because he understands his children further his life. Lord have mercy. Ha, ah, God, y'all hear me out there. Look at what God did. He created us. He breathed enough the breath of life. He put man to sleep. He pulled out a we pulled out a woman. We got together. We had children and the whole thing was there so we could worship God and further his purpose. When man meets woman, we have children. We are creating life beyond ourselves to further the purpose that we will not live long enough to see. Uh, that's not scripture. Oh yes it is. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, David had a purpose in God. Uh, David's purpose was to be a warrior king uh, and to keep Israel united uh, and to keep the, y'all I feel the Holy Ghost up in here and to keep God's commandments and to lead the people into righteousness. Uh, and just like any man David made a mistake we often hone in on that Bathsheba mistake. Uh, but I'm going to dip past that today because how he lived for God was greater than the errors that he made and what is the point that you're making Pastor Kelvin when he got to the back part of his life he wanted Lady Nicole to build God a temple but God let him know your hands are too bloody and even though it was in his heart and David had many children it was his son Solomon that continued the vision and children I want you to know sometimes fathers we may be inarticulate and we may not be to have the finesse to tell you the things that you need to hear but what I want y'all to hear this you are here with the purpose you have a purpose of your heavenly father and at some point you're going to continue the purpose of your natural father Lord have mercy Jesus you're going to produce life after yourself and you're going to continue the vision can I pick, make it plain for you I look at myself I'm in, at an age now and a lot of my habits and my tendencies even my mindset about work and a lot of things are just like my daddy, my natural daddy. I see myself pushing my son. I'm looking at Joshua, who's at work this morning. I'm so proud. I'm like a fat baby in a candy shop. He got a job and making his own money. I look to the left. My daughter got a job doing her thing, hitting the dean's list, and they are furthering in areas where I didn't Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can I, can I paint the picture and make it plain? Uh, if you don't understand, you are, Lord, have mercy, a blessing to.
to your fathers. Because when I look at my daughter and I see Jordan as a senior going into college, and I never got past my junior year, she's furthering out of vision God gave me for my life, even if I'm the one not walking it out. Lord have mercy. I'm looking at Joshua and how calm and cool he is, and he's walking out a part of myself that I always wished I had but was never able to apprehend it. So where I stop, my son picks it up, don't you? Understand, just like your heavenly father, he has supernatural desires for natural beings, but because he's a supernatural God, he took his son out of the super, put him in the natural, and let him dwell among flesh creatures, full of grace and truth to walk out his father's purpose in heaven. Lord have mercy. And the father loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. The That's a point I'm getting ahead of myself that a father will always sacrifice for his children. A father will sacrifice for his children. Let me get on in here uh, because I said an hour. So now when we deal with for God so loved, I talked about it a little about a little bit last Sunday, but we got cut off. When we deal with love in this context, we see agape love. Amen. That is benevolent love, love that you cannot earn. But then there's also family love. So here we have, if we paint the picture for God so loved, he had a benevolent love love, but then he also had a love that comes from a father or a creator to his creation because he doesn't want his creation to perish, so he sent his son to die. Lord have mercy. He says, I love you so much uh, with an undying love. If I could take you back to Jeremiah 31 3, it simply says the Lord has appeared of old unto me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. So then he comes back and he ends the verse with this. Therefore, with loving kindness have I called you fathers. Let me talk to fathers for a moment. What we see in the narrative here is though God is all powerful and though God has strength beyond our comprehension, he's expressing vulnerability to those he loves. Lord have mercy. He says, listen, children of Israel, I loved you. I punished you, but I have a love for you. You, Lord have mercy. I hate to get carnal, but y'all give me some grace this morning. One of my favorite groups in the 90s was Jodice. And in a verse of a song, they said, I can't leave you alone. And God is saying, I can't leave you alone because I love you with an undying love. And some of you have fathers that you feel are too hard on you. You feel like they're too strict on you. You feel like they won't let you do anything because you don't understand the context of love. But one of the, oh Lord have mercy, one of the attributes of a real father is chastening, which takes us, Lord y'all, I'm all over my message, so y'all just give me some grace. I promise I had it mapped out and it'll look real good. Amen. But it's all right. I just got to be me. If you look at Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the 6th through the 8th verse, he says, for whom the Lord loves, he chastises. The word chastise could be better used as disciplines. Amen. And listen to what the word of God says and scourges. So in the King James, it uses the word scourge. The Greek there, and I'm not a Greek scholar, is mastigo, M-A-S-T. I G O O. And I went a little deeper, Mama Vern, and that means he whips, he flogs, he spanks, or what we would say, he beats. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. So let's go back and start that verse again. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he whips and spanks them. Every son who receives, if you endure the discipline of God, uh, that means God is dealing with you as children. For what son or what child does the father not correct? Lord, have mercy. Can I push pause right there? If you have a father that can't discipline you, you are not that father's child. Let's paint the picture. You can't say that's your spiritual father if your father cannot correct you. You cannot say that is your natural father if your father cannot correct you. One of the marks of a father is that you see the impact of the 
discipline or discouraging on their life. One of the impacts, Jordan, one of the indelible marks on my life that will tell you that your grandfather is here is the way he put respect in me. Lord have mercy. There was something that my father put in me and that is respect. Don't you disrespect people and conversely don't you take any disrespect. Lord have mercy. If you give it as an individual, not even as a man, as an individual, you have the right to expect what you give. And sometimes if they don't give it, you got to help them understand I'm going to take it. But that's a lesson for another day. So when you look at me and you see me on my job talking to young people, 19 and 20 years old, and I say, yes, sir, and no, ma'am, it's not because I'm afraid. It's not because I'm a coward. It's because I respect individuals. Lord, have mercy. And my father put that discipline in me. I have other men of God in my life. Lord have mercy. His name is Bishop Theodore Myers, the pastor of South Richland Bible Way in Hopkins, South Carolina. I went to a school and when words didn't get me, the rod of correction did. He had a hockey stick that he wrapped up with tape. And when the boys got a little older, he took us in the office and he had a barbecue on our behind. So now when the words didn't get me, the remembrance of what hit my behind always brings to remembrance what I should not have done. Lord have mercy. And so when you see me, you see L.B. Steele Jr. You see respect. When you see honor, when you see uh, someone recollecting before he thinks twice, before he acts, you see Theodore Myers because I got a little less behind because of that hockey stick. Lord have mercy. And so now the Bible says in Hebrews 12 that if you are a son, if you are a child, the father can correct you. Can I go ahead? and make somebody a little mad this morning. Can I throw this in there for free? Now listen, this is for all you church folks that say that's your spiritual father. That's my spiritual father. That's my father in the faith. Let me pause right there and add something in there for free. I'm learning, Mama Vern, a lot of people call you that when you're on top or when they need something out of you. But you're really not a child. And I'm going to tell you how I know you're really not a child. The Bible says in verse 8, but if God does not discipline you as he does all his children, the word says you are a bastard. Lord, have mercy. And some it says you are illegitimate and not his children at all. That means if God can't discipline you, you don't belong to him. So those of you that are despising God's discipline, you are no child of God. You know who you are, rebellious. You won't listen. You won't submit. I'm not talking about to man. I'm talking about to God. You know, those of us that will pick up the word of God and trying to find a way to philosophize or think our way around what God, when I think this is what God meant, you don't listen. You don't have to think twice. God said what he means and he means what he said. So either you are a child and if you are a child you love your father and because you love your father you're going to do what? Obey your father. And if you obey your father, you're going to produce, Lord have mercy, discipleship class. You're going to produce much fruit. Do you want to know why you're lacking fruit? Because you don't obey. Do you know why you don't obey? Because you don't love. Do you know why you don't love? Because you don't honor the father. Do you know why you don't honor the father? Because you're an illegitimate child. We honor the father. And this is what, can I bring it to 2020? This is what society has been trying to do is dishonor the father. They call masculinity toxic. But if you walk through scripture, God did not develop man to be feminine. He pulled that trait out of us when he created womb man. Lord have mercy. So all of the effeminate traits, all of the girly traits, all of that over emotionalism, God the majority of that out, Lord have mercy, and created another being that would be the nurture, Lord have mercy. So no man of God, God didn't call you to be all girly. No, 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 no. That's why you have a wife. Well, they need both. Well, listen, if, Lord, Lord Jesus help me, I don't want to offend nobody, but if you stop being like Harpo and send a Hartwell County population to an all-time high, you could marry one woman and be in your children's life and you all could be a unit to Together, and they would have the nurturer Lord have mercy and they would have the protector as God intended it. I just want to speak to the men of God and say get in your place Lord have mercy and I want to speak to the counter culture that says man is not necessary. That says father is not necessary. That is the greatest lie from the pits of hell. That doesn't mean man is better than woman but that also means God had a design in mind when he 
he created man and we cannot deny what God says is necessary in the life catch it now of a wife and a child Lord have mercy because God has put in the man the father the each the ability to pour out of the woman what is necessary God has put in man the father what is necessary to pour out of the children if that's not true then why did God tell the people listen suffer not your children to wrath fathers provoke not your children to wrath because God knows within the man within the father we can either push our children away or we can pull them close about how we handle them so how do I handle a rebellious child how did God handle you before you got saved Just talking about a father's love. When we talk about the Greek agape, the benevolent love, the love of a father has no boundaries. One of the scriptures I'm going to use tonight when I get today, when I get ready to close, says this. Oh, I came ready today. It comes from Jeremiah 3, 14. God said to Israel, I'm married to you. But I need you to return and I will bring you to Zion. Some of them, we say it this way. God says he's married to the backslider. The father's love for his children knows no boundaries. So he says, listen, if you just come back to me, I will be the God in your life to take you to the promised land. The prodigal son whose son walked away and was disobedient. The father just waited. And when he saw the son returning home, he welcomed his son with open arms. My child is rebellious. My child won't listen. Let me tell you, Father, we can't give up on him. Sometimes, as fathers, my daddy taught me something. Sometimes you got to let them go and bump their heads and be grown. This is why the Bible says, uh, this way, if you have someone that's overtaken the fault, turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that their souls might be saved, Elder Brandon. And the reason why the Lord says it this way is if the sin that you're in becomes more important than the God that you serve, give them over to that sin because soon they'll realize they need the God more than they needed the sin. Because by the time Satan finished tearing you up, you'll say, I need to go back to my father's house. There's food and enough, there's clothes enough, there's shelter enough, there's work enough and you'll turn your back over what you thought but what happens is God says I'm not going to control you, I'm just going to love you and I love you enough as a father to let you have what you want but still be there when you come back and realize what you want was not what you needed am I talking good today We've got to understand a father's love. A father's love is a love of strength. Lord have mercy. It's a love of strength. That doesn't mean we don't cry. That doesn't mean we don't feel pain. How Lord have mercy. But that means men of God, fathers, that God has put in us the strength to keep pushing. Lord have mercy. Uh, oftentimes my wife, when she wouldn't feel good when we were younger, I would say, girl, what's wrong with you? She would say, I don't feel good. So what's wrong with you? I'm tired. I would say, why are you always so tired? And she would say, well, you a man. And I would look at her and kind of roll my eyes. But it wasn't until I got older that I realized she's absolutely right. Why am I expecting my wife to display the attributes of a man? Lord have mercy. The Bible says we look at our wives. Now we don't look at them, but we handle them as the weaker vessel, meaning not weak like inferior, but that we are supposed to be the strength of the household. Do you understand, fathers? This is why the enemy wants to minimize your role in your household over your children and in your wife's life. Listen, father, don't you understand when you are an absent father out of your sons, your sons then don't get identity. Just like we look to Jesus as the person we get identity from. Jesus looks to God to get his identity. Your sons look at you to get their identity. But when there's no father there to get identity from, they'll get it from Pookie the neighborhood drug dealer or they'll get it from Queen of the neighborhood homosexual and what happens is they lose their identity and they don't know who they're supposed to be because they're supposed to be getting their identity from their fathers. Their fathers get it from Jesus and Jesus is in God. So now if you abide in him and he abides in you then you'll produce the fruit that a father's need to feed his children y'all don't want to hear me out there y'all don't want to hear me out there I'm talking about a father's love a father's love 
is a sacrificial love. A father's love, Jordan, comes to context out of John 3.16. And it simply says, Mama Vern, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave. Now we understand that Jesus is God in the flesh, all God, all man. And he loves us so much that he died for us. John 15, 13 says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. A father's love is a sacrificial love. A father's love says if it costs my life, I'll make sure my children are taken care of. I'll make sure my children are provided for. A father's love says I don't care if I got to work at McDonald's, Burger King, and a third shift job at UPS to make sure those kids have clothes. That's what a father does. Oh, y'all ready for me? A father doesn't fall back on the woman and say, well, you need to go do more. No, a father says, don't you worry about it, baby. I see you working. I'll pick up another job. A father's love says, if I got to go out and crush cans, I'll make sure that child gets tuition. Uh, that's what a father's love is. A father's love is a sacrificial love. A father's love may mean, y'all don't want to hear it, I may die on the altar of sacrifice, but my grandchildren are going to have a better life because of what I sacrificed for my children. You don't see that in scripture. God is saying, I'm going to step out of spirit into the flesh, into a womb, die on a cross, raise from the dead, take sins back so I can reconcile a sinful man back to the father don't you understand father the sacrifices that you make ensure that your future posterity is always all right your presence is so necessary your love is so necessary they may not understand how you're feeling they don't know you're tired they don't know you're weary but be not weary and well doing man of God you're going to reap in due season listen man of God you may never have a million bucks in the bank of count at one time. You may not be able to put him in a mansion in Thorn Blade but guess what? When that son of yours walks across that high school graduation when that daughter Greg gets that uh, college degree and when you begin to hear them talk about how they're debt free, how they're student loan free how their marriages are burden free and you're going to see the sacrifice that you made made that possible. You may not see it now David but Solomon is going to flourish because of your sacrifice. Just talking about a father's love. So a father chastises. My, I can recall as I prepare, I have to pick this up next Sunday. I can re recall when I was about the seventh grade in middle school, I was losing my mind. I was acting foolish. I was running the streets. I was places I had no places being, doing things I didn't have any things doing. And, because my father was a street dude, and I got families that were street dudes, and neighborhood dope boys started coming around, and my daddy looked at me, and he told my mama they ain't getting killed. Amen. Now, my parents didn't make a lot of money. I think their combined salary at retirement is still less than I make now. Don't know how they did it, Jordan, but they found a place to put me in school. It cost books, it cost tuition, they even had to find a ride to get me to school because I think at one time we only had the one car. And my father had to be to work early in the morning and mama had to catch the bus. They made those sacrifices. And they got me in a place that forever changed my life. And so now they sacrificed money that they could have kept in the home. Don't know how much overtime he worked, don't know what he did, but they made sure that I didn't fall victim to what some of my family members fell victim to. That I didn't get caught up in a life that I was getting lured into. A father's love says, I'll do whatever is necessary to protect my child. Lord have mercy so that the world won't have them. How many of you fathers out there got sons and daughters that the streets got their hands on them and you won't make the sacrifice? You think, oh, let him be hard. Listen, being hard means nothing. Listen, let me tell you something. Just because I may not walk around now with jeans on and pants off my behind and my hat turned backwards and me cussing everybody out, don't try it now. I ain't no killer, but don't push me. Uh, my strength comes from God. My love comes from God. Listen, I don't beat on my son. I don't punch my son in the chest to talk about I'm making him a man. I don't cuss my son out to make him hard, to 
make him desensitized so he mistreats his children or he mistreats his wife or he mistreats we have a warped sense of what it means to be a man because we don't understand what it was what it is to love Jesus but Jesus said I'll die for you Jesus said I'll sacrifice for you Jesus said I'm the expressed image of God in the earth I am here to make you better I'm talking about the love of a father let me go ahead and wrap up here love is expressed through various means love is expressed through one sacrifice father's sacrifice father sacrifice it we don't have to brag about it it's seen you don't have to look for accolades it's seen don't look for your wife to pat you on the back. Don't look, and I'm just teaching, don't look for your children to say thank you. They have an expectation and a right expectation that a man is going to be a man. I have to tell me thank you for making sure the lights are on. That's my job. That's not scripture, but isn't God our provider? And then God make man in his image. Lord have mercy. And then he make man. I'm talking about the man. The ish, not the isha. The man, the husband. Didn't he make him after his own image to be a provider and a protector? So stop looking for accolades. You paying child. Well, I said the child support. Negro, that's what you're supposed to do. That's your baby. You want somebody to send you a thank you card for paying child support for a baby you could have prevented if you wore a condom? Huh, let me talk to you out there. But now since them children are here, here. Ain't nobody telling you thank you for providing for your child. You worry about where she taking the money, where you using the money to pay the bills, where you only sending her two hundred and fifty dollars, and she got to have lights, and you not picking the child up. So what she supposed to do? If she call you for grocery, you ask her, don't you have a job? But if you are a father, if you are a man, you don't wait for her to ask because God will tell you when to do. Jesus said, I already the Father already knows what you have need of. So now you already know your children have to have clothes. You already know your children have to have shoes. You already know your children have to have money. You already know your, your son needs a haircut. Lord, y'all, I'm about to go off on a tangent. Y'all give me grace for about two minutes. I'm about to go off on a tangent. I'm going to go back to love. Nothing makes me angrier than to see fathers with sharp haircuts, $200 shoes on, and your son's got nappy heads and run over shoes and pants too short. My son started a new job. My wife called me and said, uh, Kelvin, Joshua, pants too small. You got to do something. She didn't have to beg me. All she said was he needed. I found my way to the store and took what little money I had and made sure he's not going out the house looking homely because like Jesus represents God, I represent Jesus. Joshua represents me. How do you, man of God, know how you wear Jordans and throw back jerseys and all these jewelries and you got girlfriends that you getting their hair weave done and your son's head is nappy. Your daughter needs clothes. They can't go to the dentist because you won't get them any insurance. That's not a man of God. Come on, I don't care if you with that woman or not. That's your child. Was she crazy? She was crazy when you laid down with her, but you thought she was fine. It ain't that child's fault. That's your seed. Well, she won't let me near him. Well, still do your part. Send your card. Send your money. Go through the court system. Don't deny your child a better life simply because of the, the woman that you made a baby with. This is why we need to stop making all these babies outside of marriage. I'm talking about the love of a father. So now love is expressed through sacrifice, Elder Brandon. She ain't got to tell me thank you for the water. She got to pee. I don't want her coming in the house and flushing the toilet and don't, daddy, the water don't work. My wife ain't got to tell me thank you for health insurance. My children got to go to the doctor. Love is expressed through sacrifice. You have to tell me to work. Yeah, my feet hurt. But guess what? I'm going to hurt worse if I ain't got no place to live for my children. Love is expressed through forgiveness. Your children will mess up. Forgive them quickly just as your father in heaven forgives you. Discipline them, correct them, and then let it go. Don't bring it up and hold it over their heads. Because you made a mistake. You've made mistakes. And not only did your spiritual father, your heavenly father forgive you, your natural family forgave you. 
Let them know that mistakes are a part of life but not to wallow in those mistakes, but to get up and bathe in the blood of Jesus Christ, who is forgiveness, who gives mercy for forgiveness. Let them know if they begin to respond like the prodigal son, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I'll be here when you come back. As a spiritual father, it's not always easy to see spiritual sons and daughters not do what I know God expects of them, but guess what? God didn't tell me to strive with them. He told me to love them. Love them and let them go. Love them and let them go. And sooner or later, they're going to know that the Father's love was genuine. Sooner or later, they're going to know where home is. Sooner or later, Jordan, they will know where their genuine Father is. And they'll come back home. And we'll be standing here with our arms open. And the coat saying, welcome home. Slaughter the biggest calf. Mama Sheila, fry some chicken. Mama Vern, make some potato salad. Lady Nicole, make a pound cake. Elder Brandon, get us some gumbo. Jordan, go get us some chicken. One of my children have come back home. Amen. Amen. I hit this already, but I'll hit it again. Love is expressed through provision. Fathers provide. Let me say that again. Fathers provide. I know we live in, a, in an era now where our wives may make more than us. Amen. I ain't mad at you. Bling, bling. Wife well, got a fed check. I just told her I want to spend it. Just hit me, hit me off. I need some shoes and socks. I'm not mad because she's bringing in income, but that does not change the role of me as provider. No matter how much money she makes. So she says to me, I'm going to retire. I said, girl, I don't need you to retire me, but I won't say no. Men have to assume responsibility as provider. Even if your wife makes more money than you, you still are the provider. Well, Pastor, I got laid off Burger King hiring. Amen. I'm too good. I got four years. Are you too good to pay your light bill? I'm too good to work at McDonald's. I lost a job and I had to go over to Bilo and they had me cutting corn and sweeping floors. But guess what? Those lights stayed on until such a time as God elevated me again. Men, fathers, provide. And we take godly pride in our ability to provide. It makes me feel good when my children walk out of the house looking their best. Lord have mercy, it looks good. It makes me feel good when I see my daughter performing a certain way on a job because she saw her daddy grinding and I saw her at 16 and 17. She going to work. I don't feel good, but I'm pushing. I got school, but I'm going to finish my job. They call me in. I'm going to work. She's looking at her father. She saw her mother not feeling good taking care of the house. So she's seeing an express image of what it means to keep pushing to see my son say yeah I'm glad to go to work because I'm tired of laying around the house. Men don't just lay around the house. You got a PlayStation 4. Hopefully you earned it because you're tired from working. Love is expressed by protection. Y'all I'm over my time. I'm sorry. Protect your wife. Protect your children. Your children need to know that my daddy loves me. And he loves me enough that if any crazy dude or any crazy chick or any crazy anybody come to my house to try to hurt me, I have to visit my daddy at Kirkland. And my daddy will do his best to protect me. Conversation first. But he can catch them hands later. Daddy can't win them all. But daddy gonna go down protecting. Your family needs to know when daddy's home, I can breathe easy. Not that when daddy's home, I breathe hard because I don't know what the house is gonna be like. Children need to be glad to see you, not afraid of you. Lord have mercy. I had to say to my children, I said, daddy was hard and a lot of it I saw from my father. One thing I don't ever want you to be is afraid of me. Amen. I expect you to respect me, but I don't want you afraid of me. I don't want you to fear me. And I know we fear the Lord, but that is a reverential fear because of who he is. So when we talk about fear, it goes into the same context as respect. 
So I want you to respect who I am. I want you to respect who I am in your life. I want you to respect the position that I play in your life, the role that I play in your life. I want you to understand who God is to me and what that means about you. But I don't want you to be afraid of me. I don't want you to be timid because of me. I don't want you to be afraid to come to me. The Bible says come boldly before the throne of grace. So why, if that is an express image of the model that we're supposed to follow, our children should not be afraid to come to us. I thank God. I'm going to pause there for this Sunday. I'll pick it up next week. A father's love is the agape love of God. It is a type of love that gives us even when we don't deserve it. We can't pay for that love. We can't earn that love. It comes simply because we're his children. A father's love is unparalleled and unmatched. It's not greater than a mother's love because a mother's love has its parts. They are co-equals in the plan of God. One should not be elevated or minimized. Both should be honored and reverenced. But in 2020, I've come to speak to the culture and say we will no longer despise masculinity. We will no longer despise maleness. We will no longer despise the importance of a father in a child's life. And men of God, I want you to stand up and be and be known and be seated. There's something about when men step into a building. There's something about when fathers step into PTO meetings. There's something about when fathers step into the schoolhouses. There's something when fathers step on the jobs of our children. I'm here to tell you, when I went to my son's school, everybody took note. When I would go to my go to Jordan's college and go down, they know me by name and face now. I get down there, hey, Pastor Steele, hey, Mr. Steele, how's Jordan doing? They know me because I've made my presence known. Now, they may not know me as Pastor Steele over where George Joshua goes to school, but rest assured, when I step in that building, all the folk take a deep breath. Oh, he has a father. Yes, he does, and he's here, and I'm not just a baby's daddy. I am a father, and you're not going to lose my son in the system. You're just not going to pass him by and let him pass through. No, 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 no. Uh, help me to understand. This is the importance of a father. Help me to understand why you allowed my son to flunk and you haven't called me. Help me to understand why my child has been in detention and you haven't spoken to me. This is what fathers do. Fathers step up on the scene because I hate to say it, sometimes they take advantage of the mamas. But when a man steps, I don't care if you married to her or not, that school needs to know that child has a father. From, from preschool all the way up through college, you need to make your presence known because when you make your presence known, you're saying to everybody around you, my child will not be denied. There's something about the love of a father. Just like the fathers love our spiritual father when we call on him. He answers. He responds. He hears us. I want to take a moment and I want to pray for you. I want to pray for the fathers out there. That, you know, maybe the world has beat you down a little bit. Maybe you didn't have an image. Maybe you didn't have a role model. Maybe you didn't have an effective role model in your life. Maybe your father was a drunkard. Maybe your father was a dope dealer. Maybe your father was incarcerated. Maybe your father was a drug user. Maybe your father was a rolling stone. Oh, we can just go down a list of things. He wasn't there. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. But praise God, he was present for you to be here. Because if he were not here, you wouldn't be here. And I'm going to pray for you. Because maybe you didn't have a model. But Jesus, out of everything, is your model. I want to talk to the children out there whose father wasn't there. You needed your daddy. You wished he were there. He could have protected you. Some of you still say, if my daddy had been there. Can't change the past. But your heavenly father is here. I want to talk to somebody that maybe you're like me. Your father's going on with the Lord. I want you to know your heavenly father is still there. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for fathers. Thank you for the good. Thank you for the bad. Even thank you for those that have been absent. 
Lord, we understand maybe they didn't have the right models. Maybe they didn't know the ex they were the expressed image of you. Maybe they didn't have the information. But God, we know better. We thank you for our fathers. We thank you for fatherhood. We thank you for the protectors. We thank you for the providers. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for their discipline. We thank you for their chastisement. God, we thank you for the surrogate fathers, the godfathers, the uncles, the deacons, the preachers, those that stepped in and didn't take advantage, but were there in the absence of paternal fathers. We thank you for those men of God that spoke into our lives. We thank you for those fathers in the faith. We thank you for those fathers in the spirit. We thank you for God fathers. We thank you for grandfathers. Because God, some of them are soon roles that they never asked for, but they did it with love. And God, because of their obedience, we are here. We are standing. And we are better. And our children are better. And our grandchildren are better. I come against this spirit of wickedness that wants to destroy masculinity, that wants to feminize the men, that wants to make them effeminate, that wants to say homes don't need fathers, that women don't need husbands. God, we rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. And any man that has seen or heard that lie, we curse it right now in the name of Jesus. Man of God, I speak to you. You are more than just a baby's daddy. You are more than just a sponsor. You are more than just all the negative connotations that they give to men on today God you are a man of God with responsibility and I speak to the spirit of God in you and I ask it to rise up and take your position in your family go find your child she's not acting right in the name of Jesus I pray God give you the grace oh Lord give them the desire to show a father's love, just like you've shown us. Help us to show in the natural. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for two more people today. I want to pray, the Bible calls them in Jeremiah 3, the backslider. Amen. Romans 10, it says, save, but we call them the unsaved. I want to speak to the backslider. God says to Jeremiah, look, I'm married to them. If they would just come back to me, I would take them to Zion. For those of you whose hearts have grown cold, you've, you pray, but you're really not praying out of love. You read, but you're really not reading out of love. You're fellowshipping, but it's out of habit. Your heart is really cold. You've really kind of turned your back. You don't, you're not really in fellowship any longer with Christ Jesus. I want to pray for you. You love the Lord, but sin became more important to you. And maybe something in this message today struck your heart. If you are that backslider, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to take a moment to pray for you. Jeremiah says, God said to Israel, I am married to you. I want you to know, backslider, God is still married to you. Jesus still loves you. He's waiting for your prodigal son. He's waiting for your prodigal daughter to come back home. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to that backslider, that person that turned their backs on God, maybe it was because they lost something, maybe because they were in pain, maybe because they don't understand why they're going through what they're going through, and they don't understand understand God that you are sovereign and that things are going to work out ultimately for your good and ours Lord I pray that you soften their hearts and return their hearts and their minds back to you I ask right now to the for the backslider that you begin to repent and ask the Lord to let you back home go back to your father go back to your daddy there's room enough there's food enough there's shelter enough he's waiting for you he's got something prepared for you if you would just let him touch your heart on today he's never stopped loving you despite of what you've gone through. He's never turned his back on you. He says in Jeremiah 3 14, I am married to you. He hasn't divorced you even though you've walked away from him. He's still there waiting on you. He's waiting on you to come back home. And I just want you to say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming back home. Forgive me for leaving you. But I need you. You're my father. And I should have never forsaken you. You be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to the unsaved. Maybe you're watching this now by accident. Maybe you're catching this on the replay. Maybe you're catching it live. And something was said about Jesus on today. Because at the, at the center of all of this is Christ 
Jesus, God incarnate, God in the flesh, all God, all men came in the form of Christ Jesus to die on Calvary's cross to reconcile you back to the Father. Your righteousness isn't good enough. Being a good person isn't good enough. Doing good deeds isn't good enough. Being nice to everybody isn't good enough. Wishing people a great day is not good enough. The Bible says our righteousness is as a filthy rag. Maybe you're out there and you're feeling empty. You've tried drugs. You've tried alcohol. You've slept around. You've tried everything. And guess what? You still feel empty. You've tried the, you've tried the nation of Islam. You've tried Buddha. You've tried chanting. You've tried yoga. And still something on the inside of you is missing. I would like to submit to you today. Maybe you need to try Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, the son of the living God. He is the only one that is testified of being God incarnate. All God, all man. He is the only one that the Bible says that the word of God says died but got up in three days. He is the only one that has that testimony. He is the only one. The Bible is the best selling book of all times. Christ Jesus is the best known character. And guess what? Jesus is known in all other religions. Lord have mercy. But no other, but, but the gospel of Jesus Christ does not accept any other religion. Jesus Christ he is the only one that stands on his own. And guess what? He loved you enough to die for you. He loved you enough to be crucified for you. He loved you enough to die. Lord, what God would do that but the God that we serve? A father's love says, I'll die to save you and I'll get back up to bring you to myself. I want to pray with you for a quick moment. And if this has touched your heart, just pray this quick prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I accept you, Lord. As my personal savior, there's no other God but Jehovah. There's only one way to God, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. So Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Redeem me. Make me one with you. Show me how to love you. Show me how to please you. For God, I'm empty without you. I need you, and I need you now. And Lord, you're the only way, and I accept you on today. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you fell into any of those categories, if you were a backslider, if you were unsaved and now you're saved and you gave your life to Christ or you returned back to Christ, do me a favor. Inbox us, email us, and let us know about the joy of the Lord in your life. Listen, there's no greater joy. Listen right now, can I tell y'all something? The angels in heaven are rejoicing because you've given your life to Christ. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because you gave your life to Christ. We are rejoicing right now because you have returned to your first love and that is Christ Jesus. Listen, I want to take one moment before we get ready to give the benediction and get out of here. And if you are part of the King's Worship Center and you would like to tithe or give offering, there are several ways that you can do it. I'm only going to take a few moments. I don't take more time with money than I do on altar call. Amen. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you will see our PayPal address. You can send your tithe or your offering to that PayPal address. Amen. We also have Cash App. Amen. The King's Worship Center. You see it right there. Dollar sign the King's Worship Center. And last but not least, we also function with Givelify. Amen. Givelify. You can go to Givelify, look us up. Amen. And see us right there and make us part of your contribution. I would. Those of you that are watching today, if you have the capacity and the ability to do so, I'm not coming with a God told me to tell you, God told me to ask you, but I am asking you as a pastor of a congregation, amen, that if you would be liberal today and just sow a $25 seed into our ministry, amen. I'm not telling you the heavens are going to bust open. I'm not telling you you're going to walk outside and there's going to be money on the ground, any of that. But I am telling you that if you take care of kingdom work, that is a supernatural exchange and God will ensure that you are taken care of because you are taking care of his kingdom. So I'm making the request, amen, as we begin to revive the church, as we begin to do things, amen, like many ministries, we are slow right now gathering together again. So we do depend on the contributions of you all out there and I'm not striving with you but I would ask that you reach down and go ahead and sow one of three ways you can do it via the PayPal that you just saw you can also do it via the cash app that I have posted right there in the frame amen I'll take a second and leave that and you can also do it via 
uh, GiveLify, amen. Uh, for our ministry, most of our ministry people use GiveLify, amen. But for those of you that have not signed up for GiveLify and you do have Cash App, you can send that $25 seed to that Cash App, amen. We thank God we have not missed a beat because of your generosity. But I am asking, please don't allow the kingdom work not to be able to be continued simply because of $25. If you haven't paid your tithe, please go ahead and send your tithe in. I don't have to beat you down over that. We do it because we are cheerful givers. We do it because we love the Lord, not because we're so much looking for anything out of return, but because we love him and we obey him. So amen. Be liberal today. And if you have tithe, please sow that $25 seed into the King's Worship Center. And I pray that God will restore it back to you 100 fold return amen now as we prepare to get out of here i do pray that this message was a blessing to you today dealing with the father's love i will pick it up again next sunday at 9 a.m i would we are doing all that we can to ensure that we are safe and taking care of social distancing amen you can find us right here on facebook you can find us at www.kwci.com you can come back and see us on wednesday for bible study amen right here on this page we do noonday prayer i'll post that later and we'll also be back and have various things throughout the week so please stay engaged become a part of this ministry amen if you're not a part of a ministry i've never done this before but i'll just go ahead because i feel led and you're watching us and you feel like you know what i can't get there right now but i can i love the teaching i love what the lord is doing i love what's being said then you know what send us an inbox and we'll have lady nicole get back with you on how you can become a benefiting and contributing member of the King's Worship Center in Simpsonville, South Carolina, the place where miracles happen. Our mission and vision is simple. We want to prepare the world for Christ's return. So listen, let's rest on your feet. If you're in your homes, you can just stretch your hands like the Baptist people used to do in the day. And I'm going to speak to pronounce the benediction over you, and we're going to go and enjoy the rest of the day. And to you men of God out there, to you men of God out there, I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. You are appreciated. You are needed you are valuable you are a necessity in the home listen your family needs you your children need you the world needs you and you add value your sacrifices may not be seen here on earth but your father in heaven sees what you're doing now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless unto the day of his coming be the only wise god both glory majesty dominion and power both now and forever be blessed in Jesus' name and know that the Father loves you. Father's Day, my Father's Day, Jordans. Ha <laughs> ha! Won't he do it if you raise them right? They'll bless you if you raise them right. They'll get your desires of your heart. Thank you, Jesus.